What's going on guys? Today we're talking about four of my favorite lower ab exercises, how to do them, and ways to scale them. And upon further research, in order to film an ab or core video on YouTube, you've got to be shirtless to rank, so let's freaking go. The first exercise is going to be a bent knee leg lift. Now traditionally we'll see this performed in the gym. We'll see folks just lay down, move up and down through the range of motion, ground the lower back, back, and so forth. Nothing necessarily wrong with that exercise. However, if we think about the rectus abdominis, right, it originates at the pelvis. So it makes sense that if we're trying to target the lower portion of the abs, that we get some natural range of motion moving with the pelvis. So instead of just doing your lower leg lift, we're gonna think, come up, and then as we get to this like 90 degree hip angle, we're then gonna lift the pelvis off the ground using the core to do so. And what this is essentially going to do is that by implementing a little bit more pelvis range of motion there, we're gonna drive the lower and middle abs to create that flexion and that lifting portion. And then as you control yourself on the way down, you get some awesome eccentric loading or eccentric lengthening of the muscle, get a lot of extra work compared to just the traditional leg lift. So what we're essentially doing, traditional leg lift, but with a slight lift of the pelvis. So when it comes to the arms, try to anchor them to your side and maintain a good upper body integrity. Now what that means is essentially if we're trying to focus on the lower rectus abdominis, obviously when we go through range of motion, we don't wanna be rounding the chest in and so forth and shifting emphasis away from what we're actually trying to do. So one easy way to scale this is to start from your traditional position, lift up, do a tiny lift, and then do a slow tempo, lowering those back down. There's no perfect amount range of motion here, so if you can't get your hips super high or your pelvis super high for that matter, right away, that's okay. Start small and work your way up to a greater range of motion that is comfortable for you based on your needs. The second exercise is a seated leg lift. Now you'll see gymnasts often perform this one and that's for good reason. This one freaking burns and it doesn't require a whole lot to actually perform. So what we're gonna do, sit in a 90 degree angle here. We're gonna slightly lean that torso back, place those hands by the side, and then from here, point the toes, squeeze the quads, and lift the legs up. Now, a couple of useful cues here is number one, to initiate the lift, think about utilizing the core. A lot of people generally just lift the leg up and down, and what ends up happening is that we end up using a lot more hip flexor than core, so by thinking about creating that nice flex torso at the beginning and thinking about initiating the core to create the contraction, we can shift emphasis down as so. So for lower ab emphasis, think about almost rounding in your abs as if you're like trying to wring a wet towel out of all the liquid. So round, squeeze, establish your breathing mechanics and get to work. An easy way to scale this exercise is to assume your normal position, point the toes as so, flex the core, and just use one leg at a time. It's obviously not gonna be the same amount of work as if we're using two. However, it's a pretty easy way to acclimate you to this movement, but also keep the intensity a little bit lower to train up your ability to use both legs at the same time. The next exercise is going to be mountain climbers with sliders. So I'm on a hardwood floor. I have two washcloths here. You can use towels, old t-shirts, whatever you have if you don't have actual sliders to perform these with. The goal is to find something though that slides enough and doesn't have too much friction to make the movement pretty much impossible. So to perform this, you are going to get into an extended plank position, similar to what you would be in in a traditional mountain climber and then establish your mechanics, your breathing. Slide in one leg at a time. Nice and slow. Now the reason I like sliders for this exercise and variation 
is because we actually get to control the movement and focus on our breathing. So by doing this, we get to slow down and create better tension throughout the full core. And also we get to actually pay attention to what we're doing with our upper body. At times when we do mountain climbers, we can lean forward and shift weight away from the core. By using sliders, we can slow the heck down and really focus on engaging the core musculature. So one way to scale this is to get rid of the sliders, assume your traditional extended plank position, and then just perform a slowed down mountain climber. Without those additional sliders, it's a little bit easier to create stability, especially when in the flex leg and extended leg positioning and so forth. So to acclimate yourself to this movement, try slowing down a mountain climber, really nailing and controlling those postures and then implementing sliders. The fourth exercise we're gonna tackle is the V up. So we're gonna start in an extended supine position, raise our hands above our head, bring our feet slightly off the ground, point the toes and lift up. Now a key to these, in my opinion, is starting with those feet slightly off the ground and moving slowly. So sometimes what we'll end up seeing is V ups like that, where there's so much momentum that we can actually create a strong and intent filled contraction with the core. So by starting slower and lifting up slowly and even doing a hold, we can focus on the contraction itself and limiting how much momentum we're actually using. So an easy way to scale these is as opposed to moving through a full range of motion, simply get into a position where you are holding where you're going to be finishing that V up position. So as opposed to going here, we're just going to hold and focus on breathing, contracting, and getting used to creating a contraction with a body position similar to as so. Hopefully you're able to take one of these exercises and plug them into your routine. These are only four of the many exercises I do to train a well-rounded and dynamic core. If you like this video, drop it a like, drop the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hopefully I'll have a shirt on.